Mr. President, this constitution is very clear on the tenets of democracy in Nigeria. The only symbol of democratic governance is the House of Assembly, whether it is national or at the state level. Mr. President, as I speak with you, policemen are still in the, in the premise of the House of Assembly. No member of staff, no acquibomite have been allowed entry. Mr. President, this Senate owes the people of Kwebom State a duty and a responsibility. We must direct that the police vacate the presence of the National Assembly, State House of Assembly. We cannot shy away from, from, from our responsibility. The Committee on Police must visit our Kwebom. And we must establish the right to Mr. President. This power belongs to God and not any man. You cannot intimidate and coerce the people of Kwebom State for nothing. If you have any issues against the state, Mr. President, election is just around the corner. Wait until the elections. Then we will see who wins the Kwebom. The police must, have, must vacate the premises of Kwebom State Assembly, Mr. President. I cannot keep my mouth shut. This is not right. It is not democratic. It is tyranny. Thank you very much, uh, Sen. Let me first of all apologize for my outburst, Mr. President. Mr. President, yesterday I came and I informed the Senate, Mr. President, and I came with a motion that the police be asked to vacate the, the permission of the Commonwealth House of Assembly. Mr. President, we have it on good authority that the intention of this invasion is to impeach the governor of our Kwaibom states. There is no way in the history of our democracy, sir, Mr. President, that a five-member House of Assembly can impeach a speaker and thereafter go ahead to impeach a governor. And we are calling on the Senate, Mr. President, that as we speak, despite the directive of the Senate yesterday, the police is still within the premises of the House of Assembly of our private state. No member of staff, no indigent of the state, no, no member of the State House of Assembly has been allowed entrance into the House of Assembly. And we have it on good authority that the five members of the House of Assembly are as verge of being moved into the presence of the House of Assembly to impeach the governor of the Aquabium State. I therefore call on my distinguished colleagues that what is morally wrong cannot be politically correct, Mr. President. We owe this country a duty, Mr. President, to ensure that we, the right thing gets done. An injury to Aquabium State is an injury to Nigeria. I therefore call on this, the attention of this Senate, Mr. President, that the police must be asked to vacate the premise of the House of Assembly forthwith, without any further delay, Mr. President. Yes, Senator Keita. <clears throat> uh, everybody knows, we are all aware that there was practice, he even mentioned it days ago, arising from litigation that is to be uh, given by the courts, not, interpret not somebody outside interpreting the court's issues. And if the police were there and the other members goes in with their supporters that is going to be practiced in that place. And we all know this. It has happened in so many assemblies. So the police are there to maintain the peace. They are not there to, uh, they are not interested in the seat of the speaker or the impeachment of the, of the governor. This is total, this is untrue. It's not true that there is anything like that. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. President, you can find out, yesterday I intimated you that even the uh, reference of the court order, the court, the judgment that he is talking about, it's, it has a different interpretation. And it's only the court that can interpret the judgment. So how can five-man uh, committee uh, um, membership uh, re remove uh, 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 sitting speaker. That is one aspect of it. The second, sir, we have to be very careful. It's a double-edged sword when we are talking of these things. One, it could be that we are trying to intimidate people politically. The other one is that if you allow things to go the way you are or in, to suit our interests, then we end up in a bigger problem. So please, let us, first of all, as a Senate, verify the fact of this matter. Let us not go with the rumors. Let us then find out what is the real issues. Uh, uh, did the court judgment ask those people to vacate their seat? 
And if they did, when was that court order given? So that from, from that time, we will now know what is happening in MDZO. Otherwise, we will continue to go around in cycle. But the most important key aspect is this. Should we allow anything to go on, unchecked in that assembly, it's the same Senate here that will be addressing that uh, we, will not, we don't have peace in Akwa Ibon uh, 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 Assembly. So we have to be very careful in what we are doing, please. Distinguished colleagues of the House of Assembly, I agree with you, I agree with you entirely. The issue of the court, whether the court gave powers, did not give powers to one side or other, we have already directed the, the committee on police. But I think the issue really that we should, I would say, we leave our discussion to and be guided by those years is where legally and lawfully the police have the right to occupy the premises of the assembly and prefer the assembly from functioning uh, according to the powers. That's the simple uh, thing. Other issues he has raised, I think we have already uh, passed that on to, to the um, committee. Yes, the Senator Poker. The Commission of Police leading a group into the assembly and Within a twinkle of some minutes, the so-called speaker sat, and then you see scanty about three or four members on the floor. In as much as we are saying that we should not go into details as to the merits or merits of the matter, the issue is to whether the police have the right to go and see a parliament. We have witnessed a situation here where we were barred from entering these premises. And all of us felt that pain. We felt that pain vividly. We trekked from the gates inside here. In fact, there was no city. So let us call a spade a spade. To me, what is paramount here is for this house, irrespective of political leanings, to come as one entity and ask the police to leave the premises of uh, the state assembly and allow the assembly to sit. I don't believe the police have rights. They have been there since yesterday, over 24 hours, sealing the state parliament. If care is not taken, we are, look, we are running into a situation where this democracy can't be hindered. The police definitely have no right. And if allow this to happen, one day we'll be here and we'll be sealed and we cannot assess this floor. Democracy from what we have witnessed from yesterday till now. We talk about the issue of Quara, we talk about the issue of other states. The police are biting more than what they can chew. And I think we have to nip it at the board. I think let us resolve as parliamentarians, that the police should leave that premises. Parliament should solve the problem of parliament. Executive should solve the problem of executive. There are sufficient security problems in this country where the police can go and solve. It's not going to seal a state assembly. I so submit, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. Colleagues, I just want to join my colleague, Senator Poker, you know, on this uh, issue. There are critical questions we would like to, that demands an answer. Mr. President, I was just going through the social media yesterday and I discovered that the Commissioner of Police, the former Commissioner of Police, CP John Abad, was who had just stayed only one month in Aquaibo, was just transferred because the transfer because of this issue. And I think that uh, it is important too, Mr. President, we have a committee on states and local governments. I think in such matters, the Committee on States and Local Government should join the Committee on Police to do this investigation. And Mr. President, the Parliament is the organ of government that, govern, that does laws for the good governance of that state. And if there will be any police invasion, I'm sure that the, 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 the governor of the state is the chief security officer of that state. And for that reason, if there will be any issue of a siege of police to the parliament, it, it must be at the instance of the governor of the state. 
for the, by the situation where the governor of the state, who is the chief secretary of state, is not aware, and only want to see police invade the, national, the state assembly one early morning, I think it is not acceptable, Mr. Mr. President. I think that what we should do, we have this, this, this it has become so rampant. We witness that in Benue State. It's not good, Mr. President. Let us believe that if there are if there are if fights among members within the chambers, it is the business, it's the parliamentary business. It does not call for police to come inside or bring in talks, from what I have read. We have had a situation where we are here in this chamber, somebody brought in talks here and took, our, took away our mess. We have been here, police laid a siege on us and never allowed us to enter this chamber. Mr. President, this is a democracy, and we should defend this democracy. And the parliament all over, the legislation all over the world, is the people that, de that defend democracy of that state. Where there is no legislature, there is no democracy. So I think it is important we look at this issue. If there's internal wrangling among members, it should, that should not warrant police to come in and disrupt the activities of the legislature. Because we have staff working in that particular area. So what it means is that nobody goes in and comes out. And when we speak in this chamber, Mr. President, we should speak as statesmen. We, are, we, should, we should live above board. We should live above party sentiment. We are our party positions. We should speak as leaders in this country and condemn what is condemnable. I think that this siege on the state assembly of Akwaibom is condemnable, and we must look into it. So I plead that the, the committee on states, committee on states and local government, should also be included to operate with the uh, uh, committee on police and right away move into Akwaibom and see what they can do to stop that immediately. I think that it will be very, very important, Mr. President, and we should uh, stop this. Election is approaching. Let it not be because it's politics. Everything cannot be politics. We should know that people are watching. We should live beyond politics because that's still tomorrow. This is my contribution, Mr. President. Thank you. Deputy Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President, myself from commenting on this matter. But it appears it has become very convenient to speak in respect of this matter. I remember yesterday when distinguished Senator Akwam brought this matter, we agreed that it was uh, urgent and important enough for us to set the Committee on Police to investigate the matter and report back to the Senate. We have no reason whatsoever to doubt our colleague if he raised the same matter today alleging certain issues that before this Senate cannot be verified. For example, the issue as to whether police, the reason, sorry, the reason for the police presence in the Aqua uh, uh, Assembly uh, cannot be deciphered at this moment because we don't even know. The police uh, committee has not reported back to us to tell us what exactly is happening there. So we cannot act on speculation, sir, to take a decision that we know may not be in the overall interest of the integrity of the Senate. So my advice is that in his motion, in his speech, he has already requested that the committee on police visit Aqua Ibom today. So let the committee start going to Aqua Ibom, then report back to us before we can proceed with the matter. That is my own thinking. Otherwise, we have nothing before us to justify us taking any decision or any resolution in respect of this matter, uh, Mr. President. So I, 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 I think that uh, the proper thing to do is to direct the Committee on Police to go and come back with a report that we can rely upon, sir. Thank you very much. Deputy Senior President, distinguished colleagues, these chambers, together with our sister chamber, the House of Representatives, passed a law called the Legislative Houses Powers and Privileges Act 2017. It was duly signed by the President of the Republic, President Buhari, and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So it is a law of this country, still operational. I'll just read one or two sections. You'll be able to draw home essentially what is necessary to be done at this instance. Section 8 says, a member 
of a legislative house shall not be obstructed or hindered from gaining entrance into legislative chambers. This includes House of Assemblies. And a person who hinders the movement of a member of a legislative house into the chambers or premises of a legislative house, or who interferes or disobeys the order given by an officer of a legislative house in performing his official functions, or who creates any disturbance which interrupts or is likely to interrupt the proceedings of a legislative house, commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 100,000 or a term of imprisonment for six months or both. And an officer of the legislative house may, with or without an order of, from court and warrant of arrest, as provided in schedule, schedule to this act, arrest any person who commits an offense contrary to the provisions of this act. Sir, so, the society, including our own, hold daily the sanctity of the legislative house. And they believe, essentially, that, the, that democracy can only thrive where we have a legislative house, a parliament, whatever name so called. And until we begin to, res to respect this view, then we must be threatening our democracy. So it is wrong, as submit, sir, for any authority whatsoever to try to stop members from sitting or stop a member from going to the job for which has been elected by his people. And that is basically why this law was enacted. And the president did not waste time in signing this into law. So I believe that the police authorities not need to know that whoever is stopping the legislative house in the crime bomb or members from sitting is risking six, years, six months imprisonment. And the speaker of that parliament can on his own arrest everybody who is there or that for the arrest who is trying to stop them from doing their work. That is what our law provides. So and I think that this step must be taken to ensure that this uh, aspect of our law is implemented. There are other very noble provisions in this act, and I suggest that every member of this house, and possibly every member of the legislative of Nigeria, should arm himself with this piece of legislation. It is something that will safeguard our democracy. It will safeguard the sanctity of the, of the hallowed chambers of the legislative houses. So I think, my, uh, my uh, colleagues, that this is time for us to stand up for our democracy. It does not matter which party is involved. It does not matter which level of government is involved. It does not matter which part of Nigeria it is, it is involved. Our democracy will be at risk if we keep quiet in matters that concern one part of Nigeria, and because it doesn't concern us, and then we now think that it's all good. I think it's now for us to stand up for our democracy to ensure that the correct thing is being done. It may be a quiet bomb today, it may be under state tomorrow. So I submit that we need to ensure that the members of the State House of Assembly of Quiet Bomb will be given a conducive atmosphere to sit and do the legislative business for which they are elected. Distinguished colleagues, it's a very straightforward prayer asking the police to uh, vacate the, the, the premises and not prevent the legislators from having access to the chambers. And I think it's, it's one single prayer, and I'll put the question. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Aye. The ayes have it. Distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, Honestly, this matter, let us, uh, let's, distinguished colleagues, this is a very serious, this is a very serious matter that I think it is, it is a matter that we should not treat on a partisan matter. Where, whichever chamber that involves, I think a issue where the action to us, to any who loves democracy is a threat to it, is an action that is against a law that exists. Members of parliament should have access. Police can provide law and order without necessarily preventing members of parliament to have access. And the police have the responsibility to maintain law and order, but at the same time, parliamentarians must have access to the chambers. It's a bad, bad precedent if we allow this to happen now or in future at any time where the police can seal a parliament for more than 24 hours it is not something we should be part of. It is not something we should support. And irrespective of where, 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 what, whoever is involved, I think we should stand and stand for prosperity on the right side of history. The, 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 the police should vacate and but still provide necessary security that the parliamentarians 
should have access into the chambers there or any part of the country where we have, we have parliaments. Leader of the Senate. 